In both the United Kingdom and the United States, the preservation of steam-powered locomotives has always been seen as an important act to help keep the history and heritage of railroading alive to the present day, to show future generations what it was once like when these mighty iron horses ruled the rails, and how they helped our vital railroad systems and our countries to grow into what they are today. Most surviving steam locomotives today reside on stack display, either in outdoor parks or inside history, science, transportation, and especially railroad museums. But many have been fortunate enough to be given new lives, fully restored to running under their own power once again by volunteers and enthusiasts dedicated in keeping these majestic machines running. Either on specially built rails that run around museum property, on preserved historic tourist railroads or heritage railways, or for special long distance excursion trains along the main line. Sadly, though, while many of these steam engines do survive to this day, with either one or more surviving members of different classes of locomotives, there are many that weren't as fortunate to make it into preservation as the rest. Some were either meant to be preserved, but then scrapped by mistake, or just simply forgotten about altogether, swept up by the onslaught of modernization and dieselization. But fortunately, these locomotives won't remain gone for long. Today, there are many brand new steam locomotives that have already been built, from brand new members, or replicas, of extinct classes of locomotives, to replicas of certain individual locomotives that either took place in a significant event in real history, or has a unique piece of history behind it. This process of building brand new steam engines still continues on to this day in the 21st century, with some that are either nearing completion, that are currently undergoing construction, or that are planned on being built one day. We're going to take a look at some of these long-lost steam locomotives from both sides of the Atlantic that have grabbed my interest the most. From fast, sleek express passenger locomotives, to large, powerful heavy haulers, to underrated switching or shunting engines, to early steam-powered pioneers, I'm going to be counting down my top 20 long-lost American and British steam locomotives. Number 20 the Great Western Railway Number 31 The Great Bear One fact about the Great Western Railway of the United Kingdom that has always grabbed my interest the most is that it is the only major railway in the UK that preferred the 460 10-wheeler type wheel arrangement over the 462 Pacific type as the ideal wheel arrangement for locomotives built for express passenger or mixed traffic service. As a result, nine different classes of GWR 10-wheelers were produced throughout the railway's years of service, from the 2900 Saint class by George Jackson Churchward in 1902, up to the 1000 County class by Frederick Hawksworth in 1945. However, there was one time when the Great Western did have its very own 462 Pacific, and that engine was the number 111, or 111, or triple one, whichever you'd like to call it. Just for the sake of it, I'm going to call it 3-1, not that one. Number 3-1, also named the Great Bear, was built back in February of 1908 at the Great Western Railway's main shops in Swindon and was the brainchild of George Jackson Churchward, the chief mechanical engineer for the GWR from 1902 to 1922. Not only was it the first, and only, 462 Pacific to be built for the Great Western, it was also the very first 462 Pacific type to be built for any railway in the UK. There are different theories as to why Churchward and the GWR decided they should build a 462 Pacific. One of those is believed to be to satisfy the demands from the railway directors for the largest locomotive in Great Britain at the time. The Great Bear's front-end layout was the same as that on Churchward's earlier 4000 or Star Class 460 10-wheelers, but was fitted with 15-inch diameter cylinders, as that was the largest size they could fit without affecting the rear set of wheels on the front leading truck, or bogey for the British audience. The engine's boiler was of a completely new design, which was 23 feet in length and could hold up to a boiler pressure of 225 psi. This was considered pretty long by both current and later standards for Great Western steam engines at the time. Also, the main reason why Churchward decided to go with a 462 wheel arrangement was so it could accommodate a larger firebox, which had a surface of 182 square feet and was almost 20% larger than those on the Star class. However, despite its increase in size and power, 
which for the record had a tractive effort of 27,800 pounds, the Great Bear turned out to be a flop in the end, as many problems arose from the engine's design. For example, the axle boxes on the engine's trailing wheels were prone to overheating due to how they were located directly beneath the firebox. Also, due to the engine's length and weight, which with both the engine and antenna combined was 71 feet long and about 125 tons, it was restricted from most of the GWR network and solely saw service on the Great Western Main Line between London's Paddington Station and Bristol. Churchward did try and make some adjustments on the engine to try and improve its performance. However, the success of his 4000 Star Class 460s, combined with the approach of the First World War in 1914, put a stop to any more experimenting on the locomotive, without much significant improvement. However, even though it wasn't exactly a technological success, for a time, the Great Bear was considered to be the GWR's flagship engine, from its introduction up until Churchward's retirement in 1922, and its successor, Charles Collett, became CME for the Great Western. Then, following the introduction of Collett's 4073 Castle Class 460s, the Great Bear ceased to have any publicity value and became an embarrassment for the GWR. In January of 1924, Collett had the locomotive withdrawn from service and rebuilt into one of his Castle Class 10 wheelers and renamed Viscount Churchill, but still retained its original cab number. After that, the newly rebuilt Castle 31 continued in service for the GWR then later British Railways in 1948, until it was withdrawn from service in July of 1953, then scrapped later that year. Given this locomotive's history, it's pretty unlikely that this engine will be receiving a replica treatment anytime soon. Or ever for that matter, but I still included it on this list because I find it interesting how the Great Western Railway once had its own 462 Pacific, and the reasons why they decided to go with the 46010 wheeler for their express passenger and mixed traffic engines instead. Number 19 The Southern Pacific 4A2 Mountains the Southern Pacific Railroad had a total of 83 482 mountain type steam locomotives built between 1923 and 1928, separated into five different classes, with the first two built by the American Locomotive Company, or ALCO for short, in Schenectady, New York, and the final three by the Southern Pacific themselves, in their main shops in Sacramento, California. The first set of SP Mountains, classified as the MT-1s with 28 engines numbered 4300 to 4327, first arrived on the Southern Pacific. They arrived in two different batches, with the first batch delivered in 1923 and the other 18 in 1924. When the first 4A2 Mountains arrived on the SP, they were originally intended for use on passenger work, but as more powerful engines were built over the following years, they found themselves used on every kind of service on the Southern Pacific system. The next set of mountains were the MT-2s, numbered 4385 to 4390, and built in 1924, but these engines weren't originally built for the Southern Pacific. They were originally built for the El Paso and Southwestern Railroad, which operated in the states of Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas, and even ran across the border down into Mexico. However, they didn't see service on that railroad for too long, when the company merged with Southern Pacific sometime after they were built, and the SP inherited the 6482 Mountains, along with many other locomotives from the EP and SW, after which they became the Southern Pacific MT2s. The final three classes of 482 Mountains built by the Southern Pacific in their Sacramento shops were the MT3s, with 18 built between 1925 and 1928, numbered 4328 to 4345, the MT4s, with 21 numbered 4346 and 4366 between 1926 and 1927, and finally the MT5s, with 10 built between 1927 and 1928, numbered 4367 and 4376. Also, as seen in previous pictures, many of the SP-482 mountains were even partially streamlined with Skyline casing, the same type used on the Southern Pacific's iconic Golden State Streamline 4A4 Northerns used on the railroad's famous daylight passenger trains. In fact, some of the SP mountains were even repainted into the orange, red, silver, and black daylight paint schemes mainly on their cabs and tenders, and even got to pull the daylight trains themselves, either double-heading with each other or even with the streamlined daylight northerns. 
Unfortunately, even this bit of glamour with the daylight wouldn't be enough to save them in the end, as diesels eventually took over and replaced the steam engines on the Southern Pacific during the 1950s. By the mid to late 50s, all 83 of Southern Pacific's 4A2 mountains have been cut up for scrap. None of them survived to this day to savor the joys of preservation. Number 18 The British Railway Standard Class 6 Clan Class Pacifics Before I get started on this spot on my list, here's a bit of history for those who are new to British steam engines and the nationalization of railways in Great Britain. By the turn of the 20th century, there were more than 120 separate railway companies in the United Kingdom. And as a result of this massive number of separate railway companies operating around this time, this left the nation's rail system in a huge disorderly mess. This was mainly due to the intense rivalry and competition between many of these companies, as they all strive to transport the most amount of passengers and freight, or goods, as efficiently and effectively as possible. As a result, the railways of the UK became vastly unprofitable, and some companies even ended up closing down for good. In fact, it was so bad that when World War I broke out on July 28, 1914, all the railways in Great Britain had to be placed under government control in order to ensure they were able to support the war effort. And as a result of this, the performance and efficiency of the railways improved dramatically. As the war raged on over the next four years, the UK's railway system ran like clockwork as they transported the supplies, troops, vehicles, and artillery needed to help win the war. When the war finally ended on November 11, 1918, there was a great amount of interest in nationalizing the railways. A few years later, this interest became reality when Parliament passed the Railway Act of 1921, and by 1923, all 120 plus railways had merged together to become the four major railway companies best known as the Big Four. Although not quite nationalized into one single national company, it at least helped greatly reduce the vast number of separate railway companies in the UK from more than 120 to just four. The four major railway companies formed in 1923 were the London and Northeastern Railway, or the LNER, the London, Midland, and Scottish Railway, or the LMS, the Great Western Railway, or the GWR, and the Southern Railway, which is not to be confused with the Southern Railway of the United States. Over the next 25 years, the Big Four had each produced their own impressive fleet of steam locomotives, ranging from large, fast express passenger engines down to small tank engines, which were made possible by each railway's chief mechanical engineer, or CME for short, the one responsible for designing the motive power and rolling stock for that railway. Possibly one of the most famous designers for steam locomotives in the United Kingdom was Sir Herbert Nigel Gresley, who was chief mechanical engineer for the London and Northeastern Railway from 1923 until his death in 1941. Three of the locomotives Gresley had designed for the LNER include the Class A3 462 Pacifics, which includes number 4472 Flying Scotsman, the sole surviving member of the class, as well as the most famous steam locomotive in the world, the Mixed Traffic Class V2 262 Prairies, in which number 4771 Green Arrow is also the sole survivor, and the Streamline Class A4 Pacifics, which are considered to be Gresley's greatest design, with six preserved to this day, including the most famous member of the class, as well as the fastest steam locomotive in the world, number 4468, Mallard. The London, Midland, and Scottish Railway was considered the main rival to the LNER, with Sir William A. Stanier as their chief mechanical engineer from 1932 to 1944 after succeeding Sir Henry Fowler, who was CME for the Midland Railway starting in 1909, then for the LMS from 1923 to 1932. Some of the engines Stanier had designed for the LMS were the Prince's Royal and Coronation Class Pacifics, the Class 8F 280 Consolidations, the Jubilee Class 460 10-wheelers, and the Class 5 Mixed Traffic 10-wheelers, also more commonly known as the Black Fives. As mentioned earlier, Charles Collett was CME for the Great Western Railway between 1922 and 1941. As well as many other classes with the GWR, Collett was even responsible for designing five of the nine Great Western 10-wheelers, three of which include the 6000 King Class, the 4073 Castle Class, also mentioned earlier, and the 4900 Hall Class. 
As for the Southern Railway, not that one, they had not just one, but two chief mechanical engineers, Richard Monsell from 1923 to 1937, and Oliver Bullied from 1937 to 1948. Some of the locomotives Monsell had designed for the Southern include the Lord Nelson Class 460 10-wheelers, the U-Class 260 moguls, which for some reason were nicknamed U-boats, and the V or Schools Class 440s. As for Oliver Bullied, he was best known for designing some of the most, um, interesting locomotives in the UK. These include the experimental 060 plus 060 leader class, his air smooth 462 Light Pacifics, which were also nicknamed Spam Cans due to their streamlined casing, and the Q1 class 060s, which were said to be the most powerful 060 tender engines in Great Britain, but were often given the nicknames Ugly Ducklings, Coffee Pots, and telescopic bread loaves on wheels due to their blocky appearance. The Big Four lasted for a total of 25 years until the year 1948 when they were all finally merged into one single national railway company. And when they were, they became British Railways, or BR for short. Even after being nationalized into one single nationwide company, and despite the advent of more modern diesel locomotives to come in future, British Railways also built its own range of standard steam locomotives in 1951. These engines were built to a British standard design, incorporating ideas from the Big Four as well as overseas designs so they'd be able to work throughout the entire BR network. The man responsible for designing these locomotives was Robert A. Riddles, Chief Mechanical Engineer for British Railways from 1948 to 1953, and the final designer for steam locomotives in Great Britain. Riddles had designed a total of 12 different classes of British standard steam engines, including the standard class 9F 210 decapods, the standard class 7 or Britannia class 462 pacifics, the standard class 4 264 suburban tank engines, and the standard class 5 mixed traffic 460 10 wheelers. BR continued to build its range of standard steam locomotives over the next nine years, even after the monetization plan for the re-equipment of British Railways was publicized in 1955, in which its ultimate goal was to completely replace steam with diesel traction. It wasn't until March of 1960 when BR finally stopped building its range of standard steam locomotives altogether. The final steam locomotive to be built was the standard class 9F number 92220 Evening Star at the former Great Western Swindon Works. Steam continued to soldier on on British railways over the next eight years until it finally came to an end altogether in 1968, having all been replaced by more modern and efficient diesel and electric locomotives. In the end, a total of 999 BR standard steam locomotives were built just one short of an even number of 1,000. Today, more than 40 BR standards have been preserved, either on SAG display or running on heritage railways or on mainline tours. Out of the 12 classes of BR standard steam engines, only four were not as lucky enough to make it into preservation, one of them being the BR Standard Class 6 462 Pacifics, also known as the Clan Class. A total of 10 Klein Class Pacifics were built between December 1951 and March 1952 at the former LMS main workshops at Crewe. They were mainly based on the standard Class 7 Britannia Pacifics, but were designed with smaller boilers as well as many other weight-saving measures. This was so they could increase the route availability of a 462 Pacific, especially for where they were intended to work, the west of Scotland. To give a comparison, both the Britannias and the Clans had 6 foot 2 inch diameter driving wheels. They were both 86 feet and 9 inches long, 8 feet and 8 and 3 quarter inches wide, and 13 feet and a half inch tall. However, the Britannias had an axle load of 20.83 tons, while that of the Clans was 19.3 tons. The Britannia's weight, minus the tender, was about 95 and a half tons, while the Clans was just about 90 tons. The Britannias could reach a boiler pressure of 250 psi, while the clans could reach up to 225 psi. The Britannia's firebox measured 210 square feet, while the clans was 195 square feet. And the Britannia's cylinders were 20 by 28 inches, while the clans had slightly smaller 19.5 by 28 inch cylinders. As the name applies, these engines were named after different clans of Scotland. 
In fact, some of them even got their names from the former Highland Railway Clan Class 46010 wheelers, which were all withdrawn from service around the time the BR Standard Class 6s were introduced. There were plans to have a further 15 engines built, which would have resulted in a total of 25 Clan Class Pacifics. However, these plans were constantly put off due to acute steel shortages in the UK around that time. Eventually, these plans were finally cancelled altogether, following the publication of the Modernization Plan in 1955. While in service, the clans received mixed receptions from different engine crews. Those who operated these engines on a regular basis gave them pretty favorable ones in regard to their performance. However, when they were put on trial on other parts of the BR network, the reports on them then weren't all that good. One more common complaint about the clans was that they were poor steamers, which made it difficult for them to keep to their schedules. Another negative factor about the clans was that they tended to be assigned to the same Class 7 work as the Britannias, even though the clans were only a Class 6 design. This was probably due to their similar appearance with that of the Britannias, which most likely got the two classes mixed up. Ultimately, in the end, British Railways deemed the standard Class 6 Pacifics a failure. They began to be withdrawn from service in December of 1962, and by May 1966, the British Railway's clans were no more. But not for too long. A new build of the next Clan Class Pacific to be built, number 72010, Hengist, is currently undergoing construction, and is considered to be the 1000th BR Standard steam locomotive to be built. At the time of this video, two of the biggest components that have already been completed are the cab and front smoke box, complete with chimney, door, and number plate. Its frames are nearly complete, and work is currently being done on the engine's cylinders, leading bogey, and various other components. It's still going to take quite a bit of time, money, and work before this new clan is ready to hit the rails. Number 17 the London and Northeastern Railway Class B-17s The Class B-17 46010 wheelers were designed by Sir Nigel Gresley for use on passenger trains on the LNER's Great Eastern Main Line between London and Cambridge, Ipswich, and Norwich. A total of 73 B-17s were built between 1928 and 1937, with most of them built at the LNER's works at Darlington. These engines came to be when the LNER's Class B-12 10-wheelers, formerly the Great Eastern Railway Class S-69s, were no longer able to cope with passenger trains on the Great Eastern Main Line, as they became longer and heavier for them to pull. Although Gresley did have plenty of larger classes of engines that could cope with these longer and heavier trains with these, he couldn't have them do so due to strict weight restrictions placed on the Great Eastern Main Line. It became clear that they needed a new class of lightweight yet powerful 10-wheelers to take over passenger services on the line. Many of the features for the B-17s were directly copied or slightly modified from Gresley's Class A-1 and A-3 Pacifics, such as the cylinders, cab, and valve gear, while the boiler design came from the Class K-3 260 moguls and the Class O-2 280 consolidations. Throughout their service on the LNER, the B-17s became known as the Football Engines, or Footballers, as they were named after popular football clubs. Uh, not that kind of football. I mean football as in the British name for soccer. One interesting fact, two of the B-17s were once even streamlined. In 1937, numbers 2859, Norwich City, and 2870, Tottenham Hotspur, were streamlined in the same style as Gresley's famous Class A4 Pacifics, and both saw service on the East Anglian passenger train between London's Liverpool Street Station and Norwich. While streamlined, the two Gresley 10-wheelers were each given new names. Number 2859 became East Anglian, and 2870 became City of London. However, their streamlining had been added purely for publicity and did nothing to enhance their speed and performance. Their streamlining would later be removed in 1951. Between 1945 and 1949, Gresley's disliked successor, Edward Thompson, had tended the B-17s rebuilt into two-cylinder engines and had them reclassified as B-2s. Fortunately, no more were rebuilt following the success of Thompson's Class B-1 10-wheelers. Withdrawal for the B-17s began in December 1952, and by August 1960, all the football engines were out of the game for good. 
after they were scrapped, some of their nameplates were presented to the football clubs they were named after. But the B-17s will be making a comeback. A new bill for the next B-17, Spirit of Sandringham, is currently being built by the B-17 Steam Locomotive Trust, and currently they already have the engine's frames completed and are currently doing work on the engine's driving wheels as well as various other components, but they still have quite a ways to go before they can have the engine eventually ready for mainline service. There was also another project for a replica of one of the original B-17s, number 61662, LNER 2862, Manchester United, which was being constructed by a group known as Engine 61662 Appeal, although the replica wouldn't be a real working engine, but more for static display. However, the project ended up being terminated in November 2020, despite all the progress that have already been made to the replica locomotive, including acquiring an original Eastern Region tender. But many of the parts from the project were donated to that for the new build B-17, 